everyone, Wayne here. Today we're going to do a playthrough of Vikings Scourge of the North, a mini game from Decision Games. Um, Vikings is a quick little solitaire game. Uh, this one is designed by Joseph Miranda. Uh, the map graphics are Joe Use, counter graphics by Nadir Elfara, um, if I pronounce that correctly. So basically, um, it's an interesting little war game where you're covering a topic that I don't think there's a whole lot of war games about. There are some uh, Euro games and kind of Meritrash style games that do, you know, Vikings quite a bit, in fact. Usually more like miniature games, things like that. This is straight up, I mean, area movement, not hexes, but other than that, you got little counters and going around, you know, doing Viking things. So um, we're just going to do a saga. Um, the game itself can be either do individual sagas or broken up or an entire campaign. We're just going to play one saga today. I've already pre-selected the saga. Um, the game comes with, I think, four different sagas that you can play through as part of the campaign. Like I said, we'll just do the one here. Um, I have it all set up already for the most part. I think all we have to do is buy our units. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of dive in here. I'll explain as we go and as we play. All right, so if I can pick up the card here off the uh, Plexi. Apparently, that's, I don't have her nails right now, so it's, it's not really working. That's a little bit of a bummer. <laughs> I can't get scarred up. All right. Uh, ugh, there we go. All right. So, <laughs> apologies there. So you can go ahead and read this card here. This is a saga. We're going to do the Eric Saga. I'm sure there's a different way to pronounce it, but I call it the Eric Saga. Um, as you can see. So we start off with uh, seven Voyage cards. Voyage cards are how this game keeps track of turns. So every time during the... And basically kind of in the middle of a turn in the middle of the sequence of play, you're gonna be drawing a voyage card. And then there are different actions that can happen that may add a voyage card or take away a voyage card. Um, obviously you don't wanna take away too many because for instance, you can tell we get seven. That means you really only have seven turns, possibly less, maybe more, although you'll find I find often that uh, depending on the effects, I usually end up losing a turn or two. So you have seven or less turns generally um, to get it done. And each turn is gonna be you, know, you moving, gauging combat, pillaging, settling, etc. And we'll go into each of those as we play through this uh, through this saga. So we also start off with eight gold, um, which I've kept track of right now little, on the little counter here. And then we, this is our objective. So to complete this saga, the Eric saga objective, two, we have to found two settlements and at least one must be in Greenland or Vinland. So Greenland, um, we have to do one quest as well. And then success, that's more for the campaign game. Place one settlement within two spaces of a homeland, not containing a quest. So really, that's for the campaign game. We really don't have to worry about that. Our goal here in this saga is going to be place those two settlements, and then we have to go ahead and complete one quest. So place this bad boy down here. I already have the seven um, voyage cards here. We'll look at those as we play. Um, I've already established what I'm, I've already chosen. Now, the game says you do it randomly, but... This game's kind of really hard if you follow all the rules as is, but rules as written, you pick a Jarl randomly. I have them flipped over so to show the ones I don't have. Eric the Jarl, Leif, Harald, and Rurik. I chose Rurik because he gets a bonus, builds a settlement at a cost of one gold. The normal cost, I believe, is two gold. Um, so clearly with our goal here, being our objective being found two settlements, it's going to help to have um, this guy. Cool little artwork on the counter, by the way. Really like it. Um, and then just to show you the numbers, the four is his combat strength, and the plus just indicates he is an elite unit. This will be on any of the counters in the game are going to have a combat strength, and then may or may not be an elite unit. And we'll get into the effects of those as we play, as we encounter them. So what I have is I have Rurik in his box over here in the Jarl box. Um, on the map, I just have a green cube. The game doesn't come with that. I just found one. Um, representing him. You can also, you could use, say, your Jarl counter, put it in that spot, and then you can put your units here in the box for your Jarl to show that they're with him, um, or you could just stack them all in the box, whatever the case, whatever works for you. Because of the way the combat works in this game, and you use actual counters for combat, including this guy, your Jarl, I just like to use them to keep track of where I am, because otherwise you'll be removed, probably removing him from that spot to do combat, and then you won't know where he is. So, um, you'll have your Jarl, you'll have a force with him, you're going around, and like I said, just kind of exploring, pillaging, or settling, and doing other things. So, 
See, everything's all set up, I think. Yep. Um, other than, let me go ahead and let's buy our units. All right. So, with Rurik over here, um, we have our gold, and there's a price, there's a recruiting chart here of the different units. And some of the units you can only buy under certain circumstances, particularly the really tough ones. So, we'll do make it simple here. Let's go ahead and buy a long ship that'll cost three gold. So, mark off three. Grab our long ship here. Again, you're just going to have the cool, cute little artwork on there. Cool little artwork. I like it. Um, nothing crazy, but I like how it looks. Let's go ahead and buy two of these Huskarls. Two gold each. So one, two, one, two. That'll leave us with one gold. So we'll buy two of these Huskarls. I don't know if it's zooming in or not. That's okay. Once we're on a board, you should be able to see them fine. So, all right. So right now we'll have our long ship. Um, the long ship has a two and an N and means it's a naval unit. The two means it's its combat strength. It also means it can carry two units, which are the two Huskarls. Um, I do not know. It's a little bit of a issue of people online cannot decide if the leaders count, the Jarls count as a unit or not. I mean, it does list them as a unit in the game, but at the same time, uh, with the amount of gold you have and needing two, let's just put it this way. If every unit if you, this long ship can only transport two units, so I have three now, right? So I would need an extra long ship. I only have one gold, you know, long ships cost two, so I'd only, I can't buy any more. So I would only be able to take my Jarl and one Huskarl traveling. Well, because if you look, say from Denmark, Denmark, where I am now, where my cube is, um, there's only sea lanes. The white is sea route, um, blue is river route, green is on land, uh, and then... So the, the actual white ones here, traveling to these white circles, those are going to be all the sea. It would be pretty clear. I think you can tell those are where the ocean is. But what that means is literally to leave my homeland, any of the places to leave your homeland, you have to go by boat. You have to go by long ship. Um, so, and there's not enough time to like go pillage. Anyway, long story short, I'm not counting that maybe cheating, but at the same time, here's the deal. This game is actually really hard if you follow, like I said, all the rules completely as written. So I kind of fudge a little bit and say, listen, my leader, Rorik, he's a count. He's chilling. We just need a long ship for our two fighting units. Fair enough? All right. Let's dive in here. So we bought our units. Should be all set up. I believe we're ready to go. I have the quests already placed. They get placed randomly. Um, all right. So look at our Eric Saga again. Objective two settlements. At least one must be in Greenland or Vinland, which obviously is a map of Europe. Greenland here, Vinland over here. So... Um, we're going to want to make our way up here, there's Iceland, make our way to either Greenland or Vinland, probably Greenland since it's closer, and you know, the more actions we take, the more voyage cards we use, and then we're going to run out of time. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and dive right in here. First part of the sequence of play, uh, it's called the trade segment. Receive one gold if the voyaging force, voyaging forces are guys, so Rurik and all his dudes, you know, here represented by this green cube in Denmark, um, which right now, if you look over here in the train key, we're in the homeland. One of the homelands. Uh, receive one gold to the voyaging forces in a trade center space with a settlement. Trade center spaces, you can see them. They have these cool coins on there. We are not in one. And none of them have settlements yet because we haven't built settlements. So we can cut. basically, we're going to be able to skip that pretty much the whole game here. So at least this particular saga. Um, now the Laydong segment, if I'm pronouncing that right, Laydong segment, is the voyaging force can recruit units. Um, so this is when we'd be buying additional units. Now, whether, you know, you want to say that this is now when we should do that or you just do it ahead of time. I don't know. I just, we did it. It's no, no big deal. We're in our homeland. So it's easily to recruit any units we want for the most part. Um, all right. Now we've gone to the movement segment. Movement is a little unique. So if you are on land and moving from land to land, you just move one space. So I can move one. That's it. Um, if you're at sea, it's actually variable movement. You do roll for it. So green, so we have two dice, by the way. Green will be us. Red will be the hostile units. So you can see I have the hostile units in a cup. You draw them, which is kind of a cool way for the combat to change. Not only every combat you roll for them, how many there are, but you also are drawing from a cup like that. So I kind of like that. All right. So for green, we're going to go ahead and roll for our movement. And what? Because we're going to leave by sea. We have to from where in Denmark, if you look, it's all white. There's no way to go by land. And we want to make our way. Let's go to Greenland. Um, we might stop off at Iceland and uh, do some pillaging for some more gold. So, but we got to get started here. So let's go ahead. We're gonna do a naval movement, and some, now that we've declared a naval movement, go ahead and roll to see a one. Okay, so what you do is you roll a one d six, you divide by two and round up. So one drops to a half, you know, 0.5, and then you round up to one. So we get to move 
one. Now, if you do move um, naval, you uh, move through the sea, there is a sea space check for storms. So you roll a die, you add the number of sea spaces entered, and you subtract one if our voyaging force includes a Jarl. Um, obviously, yep, we have Rurik the Jarl, so we'll be able to take away one. So what it'll be is, we move just to the one, so we traveled one sea space, we roll a die. A two, plus one, because we traveled one, so that's a total of three, minus one for our Jarl, a two. Remember, if it's six or higher, we discard a unit, or eliminate a unit. We only rolled a two, so no big deal. Um, all right, now we go to the Voyage card segment. So this is those Voyage cards I told you about. So we go ahead and draw one out of our deck. Remember, we only have seven cards to start with, so we don't have a lot. First one, Hostile Force. Go to Combat Procedure for the Adventuring Force. Ah. All right, so we are going to engage in combat right away. Um, so very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start lining up my units over here. And this is one of the reasons, like I said, I use the green cube to keep track. I was using my tweezers for this, but as I was playing, but I was kind of dropping them sometimes, so I gave up on the tweezers for this game. Because you're kind of manipulating quite a bit. So, you know, we'll get our force over here. Now, what we do, I mentioned this earlier casually, but to start off for combat, um, we roll for the number of hostile units. It's just like it was for movement. It's 1d6 divided by 2 round up. You also, in, if you ever play a role-playing game like D&D or something, I think it's like 1d3. So, because the options are only 1, 2, or 3. So, roll the 2. That means we only select one. So we have our cup. Go ahead and draw about our cup. One unit, so it's three, and you go ahead and he goes up here. Um, now we did a roll for tactical edge. Uh, one of the cards calls it battlefield edge, I think, or battlefield advantage. So again, a little bit of a, you know, a rata in between. Uh, the game plays very well, it's not a problem. There's just some wording issues, I think, in between the rule book and some of the cards, but Everything makes sense. Clearly what we know is you're rolling for to see who has an advantage really for the combat. Um, this will go for the entire combat. And what you do, and this is where when I talk about the pluses for an elite unit, if a unit has the plus, it counts as an elite unit. Whatever side has more elite units gets a plus one to their die roll that we're about to do. Um, if there's a tie, the Vikings, that's us, win every time except I think if you're in a fortress space, which is the uh, red diamonds so you can see there's a few of them but we're not in there at all so let's go ahead and roll we're the sea space let's fight all right so it's a tie so that means we get the advantage because three two but we have more elite units so our two actually becomes a three and like i said before we win ties in every other space other than fortress so we get to go first basically all that is that just means we, whoever gets to go first has that tactical edge so combat is super simple um, we look at our guys and we want to go ahead and put them in the order um, for combat. So what I'm going to do, and you may want to do that before you roll. Um, I'm just, you know, since I'm just playing through casually and teaching you guys also, it's, I'm not really worried about it, but you may want to um, organize your guys and because what you're doing is you're fighting back and forth kind of across on this imaginary line, right? That's why I talk about lining them up. So what you usually will do is you'll put kind of your weaker guys up top, usually, uh, maybe a leader, your Jarl, and your boat. Because if you lose your boat, you're stranded. I mean, you know, if you win the battle, you get some money, you may be able to buy one. But we'll see. We'll see how this works. So, all right. So we have our guys lined up. This is how we're going to do it. We need to go first. Very simple. Combat strength of three on our first, our Huskarl there. All we have to do, if we roll a one, two, or three, we get a hit. We eliminate whatever unit we ch we're targeting. They only have one unit, so we'll go ahead and target that guy. So one, two, or three. Four, bummer, so we did not eliminate him. Um, now he gets to go, and he just targets the first guy across, whoever's on top, basically. That's why we, it's really important how we line ours up. A one, so he actually gets a hit, which does eliminate my guy. Um, that's a real bummer. Okay, um, now our, our Huskarl, our second one, will go. Three or less. Yep, he gets hit and eliminates him. Now, say we hadn't eliminated him. Say we had rolled uh, six, and so, you know, it wasn't one, two, or three, so we didn't get a hit. He doesn't get to go again. He already went this round of combat, so then it would be Rurik, and then our, actually our longship would also get to you know shoot some arrows at him or something like that and try to run him over in the water. Um, and then it would be, a, if he survived through all that, we'd go to a second round of combat, we'd keep the tactical edge we already had, which was us, and then we'd just have another round of combat. So, But he was eliminated, so we did win that combat. Yay for us. I'm just going to leave our guys over here because we're going to be doing some fighting. So I'm just going to leave my guys floating in the ocean, okay? Hope you don't mind. Now... If you look at that voyage card, at the bottom it says win or lose, win slash lose. 
one voyage card or two gold. Basically what that means is if you win, you get to draw, uh, not draw, but you get to add a voyage card from the reserve deck of voyage cards to your deck, meaning basically you gain an extra card, um, an extra turn, or you get to take two gold. Now, if you lose, it means you, you have to discard an extra voyage card or discard two gold if you have it, which we only have one, but no big deal, we won anyway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that two gold because we need that money because we need to replenish our supplies here. Um, so one, two, so now we're up to three gold. Um, okay, we finished up our combat here as a result of our voyage card. Now we have the quest segment. Basically check to see are there any face down quest markers in the space in which you're in, if you've completed your movement. Nope, there's none. There's only the quest markers are these little guys here. And the other side is each one is a unique quest. So again, a pretty cool little thing where you roll randomly to play some and then each one's different. So kind of cool. It increases the replayability of the game. So, all right, we'll basically skip that segment because there's no quests. Now, pillager settlement. If you're in a town or a fort fortress space, we're not. We're in the middle of the ocean. So no big deal there. So kind of go restart now into the next turn. Again, there's no really defined turns. It's kind of just kind of keep going through the sequence of play. So first part is that trade segment. We're not in any trading places. Uh, Lay Dong segment, this is where we get our recruit units and this is where we're gonna do it. Now again, this is one where there's a little bit of question. Some pe course people question online because the rule book versus the board. So in the recruiting chart here, say we have our Huskarls, which remember we lost one in combat, so we're probably gonna get another one. Um, it says deploy Viking homeland or settlement, which would be here or in a space we build settlement. However, when you look in the rule book, it says they can also get deployed to a Jarl. So I'm gonna go with the, the option that gives me more options because like I've said before, the game's kind of hard. So I play it where I get the advantage. Um, if you wanna make it harder, I would say just go by the recruiting chart. We're gonna go by what the rule books are written as written. Rules as written, raw. Okay, so we'll, let's go ahead and recruit. Let's do recruiting. So we'll spend two gold, we're back down to one. And let's uh, recruit a Huskaro. And then he, uh, you know, gets on a boat and meets us out here. So I'm going to go ahead and just add him to our little guy, little group of guys right here, a voyaging force. Um, call it even. So, all right, now let's do our movement. We're already at sea. We're obviously have to do a sea movement. So let's go ahead and roll a three. So round it down, or excuse me, divide by two is one and a half. You round up, always round up. One and a half becomes two. So we get to move two spots. So go ahead, one, two, um, yeah, and, well, we're on the ocean here. So now remember, we're, in, we're at sea, so we have to roll four storms. Let's go ahead and roll to see if we lose any guys. Um, two spaces at sea, so we move one, two, so it's a plus two to this die roll. So six, seven, eight, minus one for because we have a Yarl with us, that's a seven. It's a six or higher, which means we lose a unit of our choice. Obviously, we want to lose our Huskarl. I didn't want to, but have to. Bummer. All right, let's go ahead and draw a voyage card. Nilfheim, make an Eda check. Succeed, gain one voyage card or reveal one quest marker. Fail, lose one voyage card. Ooh, okay. So an Eda check. Now, when you've, this is, again, this may be a little bit of a thing where I'm not sure of how the game, the game has it set up. As far as I've seen, I don't know, I, did, I could not find a place where I start with any Eda. Eda's up here, there's an Eda track and there's a little Eda counter right here. Well, um, your Eda, as far as I'm aware, starts at zero. An Eda check means you have to roll that number or below to pass. So it's at zero. So it's, as far as I'm concerned, it automatically fails. So it would be, you know, there's a no way to win unless you say that an, a one automatically wins. I don't know how to do it um, other than the fact that we rolled a three. We're at zero. We lose. So it's kind of a bummer there because there's really no chance to win. Maybe an issue where maybe you're supposed to start somewhere, but it doesn't list it on the saga card and, and set up in the rule book. It doesn't list it either. So... We're gonna play as is. If anyone knows uh, better, if they know, oh, you're supposed to start at a certain amount of Eda, please let me know in the comments below. Um, so that way we can all establish that. Otherwise, I just play it where you start at zero and work your way up over time. Because there are, as you play, if you do the campaign mode, that's when your Eda starts getting built up. So, um, where was I at? Okay, so we failed. All right, so fail, we lose one voyage card. So whatever this card is, we're gonna go ahead and discard it. Uh, hostile force, so we avoided a combat, but we're also lost a turn, so it's, I wouldn't call it exactly winning, so. Bummer. All right, well, that was a void card segment. Uh, if there had been any combat generated, which, you know, ours was we had to deal with the Eda check, we would have combat now. No combat. Check for quests, no quests. Pillager settle. 
we're in the middle of the ocean, no big deal. Continue on into the next turn or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. So, all right, any trading? Nope, obviously we're still at, still at sea. <laughs> Uh, the Lei Dong segment. The, I'm gonna call it reinforcement from now on. Lei, I don't know how to pronounce Lei Dang, Lei Dong, and I feel like an idiot saying it. So we're just gonna call it the reinforcement segment here. Um, any Viking scholars post below. Let me know how to actually pronounce it. I assume it's Lei, because like L E I D A N G, Lei Dong, because Leif Erikson, right? He's, it's not Leif, it's Leif, right? So I don't know. Whatever. Reinforcement segment. Voyaging force can recruit units. Unfortunately, we only have one gold. Um, and all the units are, the minimum price of a unit is two, the Huskarl. So kind of bummer there. Um, we cannot recruit because we need to add one, but that's okay. We're, hopefully we'll get some money when we go uh, pillage Iceland because now we're going to go to the movement segment and that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to be able to move to Iceland. I don't have to roll because it's literally just one space and the minimum movement is one. So we'll go ahead and we land in Iceland. Um, and that's it for the movement because we only, we went into the... Uh, what's called a coastal town space. So we don't have to roll for storms or anything, but we do draw a voyage card now, voyage card segment. Shield wall, keep, keep this card. Play during combat to automatically gain battlefield advantage instead of rolling for it, or break off after any combat round and retreat to an adjacent space. Very nice, all right. Um, so you have to hang on to this for sure, this would be very nice. And again, this is where I had mentioned before that the tactical, the thing where it's called tactical advantage or tactical edge, the rule book it's called tactical edge but on here it says battlefield advantage which i assume is the same thing so a little bit of a rata there they could they could fix in the future but anyway um we'll go ahead and keep this bad boy over here so we remember shield wall yeah do not forget that bad boy so all right well that was our voyage card um go on to the combat there's no combat because we didn't draw for any combat any quests nope no quests here this could there could be a quest could be sent place here maybe if there's a, if I don't know if it's on the chart or not, but I mean it is like a land spot, so there could be, um, theoretically, pillage or settle. Now here's where we get to decide. Clearly, we need some money. We need some gold. Our objective is to settle two settlements. One has to be in Greenland or Vinland. Theoretically, maybe we could try settling here and then there, but we wouldn't be able to actually because we wouldn't have, we don't have any gold. Then we'd have to try to survive combats. No, 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 no. We're gonna pillage Iceland. So sorry, Iceland. So it's an automatic um, pillage. Basically, we do the action where we pillage Iceland. Sorry, guys. But then we go ahead and we roll 1d3 for that many gold. Or, you know, the usual. Roll a 1d6, divide by 2, round up. Let's see, 5, divide by 2, 2.5, two round up is 3. So we get the max gold. 1, 2, 3, it's up to 4 gold. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Hmm. Very cool. Okay. All right. Um... Yeah, I like that. Cool. All right, that's it for this turn. Uh, wrap around again. Trade segment. No trading, so no worries there. Uh, reinforcement segment. Ha ha. So with our four gold, um, you know, I think I'm thinking long term here. Because I can, I can only, I have enough gold to buy two Huskarls. Um, but I couldn't carry them all because the longboat only has room for two. And we already have one Huskarl, so we can only buy one more. So, but what I'm thinking is if I buy a long, a long ship, another one, yeah, it's not as good in combat, but once I have two of them, then if I get more gold in the future, I can get more Huskarls. Um, mm, yeah, let's do that. Just in, give us a little more flexibility too. Um, so let's go ahead and one, two, three. So we'll just go ahead and add our long, long ship down there. We're down to one gold. No big deal. Okay. All right, let's do the movement segment. We're going to head to sea, and we're going to head to Greenland and uh, try to found, uh, found a settlement there, because why wouldn't you want to live in Greenland? So um, let's roll. Roll for our movement, our sea movement. It's a three, divide by two, one and a half, round up, two movement. We had one, two. Oh, so close. We got the three. We could have went right to Greenland. So all right, we're at sea, so we're going to have to do the whole sea roll, roll for storms. We move two, so I had to slide two to this roll. So that's a total of five, minus one for our Jarl, four, no big deal, we survive. Now we check the voyage card, go ahead and flip that bad boy over. Hostile force, go to combat procedure for the adventuring force. Ooh, all right. Okay, whew, all right. So let's roll to see how many enemy units there are. Roll to one, so there's only one. Let's drop in the little cup. 
Boom. Five. Whoa. Okay, well, if he gets to go, he's going to whoop us. Um, he's going to whoop on probably one of my units for sure. All right, we have one elite unit. They have zero. Therefore, we'll get a plus one to our die roll here. Let's roll for Battlefield Advantage or Tactical Edge, whatever you want to call it. I do feel like Battlefield Advantage sounds more like a from a Viking game. I feel like Tactical Edge sounds like something from a like World War II game, but more of a modern war game. Anyway, we have a plus one, so our one becomes a two. However, they rolled a three, which means they get the Battlefield Advantage, Tactical Edge. So he gets to go first. The hostile unit goes first, so he has a five combat strength. So if he rolls a one through a five, he's going to hit one of my guys. If he rolls a four, he hits the top one. I didn't order him, I just realized, but that's okay. It is what it is. Yeah, I had him in a good order anyway. So our last Huskaro is dead now. Ooh. Um, now we get to go. Rorik gets to go. He attacks a three. It's less than his, equal or less than his four. So we eliminate that unit. All right. Hostile force. Let's see. Win, lose. One voyage card or two gold. Um, uh, we only have, I don't, I don't know if we're allowed to count how many cards are left, but I can, I can see. It looks like there's only two left. Have we already gone through that many? No. Oh my god. Uh, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna take the gold for now. I, I I trust me. Trust me, everybody. We're gonna take the gold for now. We need we need money. We need gold. We need reinforcements. All right. We got our two gold. Finish up the combat. Quest. No quest in the middle of the ocean. Can't pillage or settle the ocean. Wrap around. Trade segment. No trading here. Reinforcement segment or lay down segment. Let's go ahead and spend two gold to buy another Huskaro. He swims out to us and reinforces us here. All right, perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and move. Um, we're gonna move to Greenland. Again, we don't have to roll because it's only one. And what we're going to do when we get the chance, we're definitely gonna settle there. So, um, but we have to do the voyage card first. Let's go ahead and flip a voyage card over. Voyage, hostile force, go to combat procedure for the adventuring force, of course. Of course, that's what they're doing for us. So, do a combat. Let's roll to see how many hostile units there will be. A three, so that actually means there'll be two hostile units. Move them over. A three and a four plus. You, you uh, organize them from strongest to weakest. So they have a long ship. Taxes must be while we're in port or something. Let's go ahead, I think, here's what I'll do like this. Put Scarlet Top, a long ship, Rorik, and then the other long ship. There we go. All right, they have two units that have our elite, and we only have the one, Rorik. So they actually get the plus one on their die roll. Bummer for us. Roll for battlefield advantage. Oh, they rolled better. They had a plus. They rolled better with even without the plus one. So they get to go first. So their long ship will attack my Huskarl. Long ship has a four. So anything four or less is a hit. Yup, and kills the Huskarl. No, I get to go. Even though the top one of Scarl's dead, I still get to go. I get to do my long ship. He only has a two. So one or two hits. Four. He doesn't hit anybody. Now there looks like almost like a leader gets to go. Here's a three. So one, two, or three is a hit. Three is a hit, so he destroys one of my long ships. Now Rurik gets to go. He's a four. So one, two, three, four. Yup. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that long ship because it's obviously the strongest one. And then now they're out of units, so they don't have anyone to go, so my last unit here my long ship is to go a one or two or a hit that's a miss so we go back to another we do another round of combat a second round um unless i decide to flee which i'm not going to we're going to fight it out here so he gets to go first though because they keep their battlefield advantage or tactical edge one two or three he's going to hit Rurik. five he misses so Rurik gets to go one two three four four so he hits and kills their leader boom we do win the combat uh barely um so win lose one voyage card or two gold. I can see there's only one voyage card left, so we need that voyage card. Although I would have liked the gold. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we have a um, a draw deck of like reserve voyage cards. You draw one randomly. You place it at the bottom of your voyage deck. So at least we have two turns left now. So all right, that was the combat um, quest segment. No quests here. Pillage Settlement. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to spend our last gold to go back down to zero. And we're going to settle here in Greenland. Remember, that was one of our objectives. Two settlements. One must be in Greenland or Vinland. So now we have a settlement here in Greenland. Hey, doing the best we can. All right. 
Let's wrap around, go to the next uh, next turn here. Trade segment, no trading to be done. Reinforcements, unfortunately, we're at zero gold, so we can't you know get any reinforcements. We're gonna move. Let's head down to Scotland. Um, we can either we can do that quest and maybe drop a settlement there and win the saga. Um, so we roll good for movement here. So, all right, what am I looking at here? Yep, let's go ahead and move. So we're we'll do uh, C movement. So let's go ahead and roll. Get the right die. Oh, you gotta roll the green one, guys. All right, five. All right, that's sweet. That's three movement points. So one, two, three. Now we'll check for storms because we're at C. We move three, so add three to this die roll. Five, six, seven, eight, and then minus one for our Jarl. So that's a seven. So we lose a unit. Um, we only have Rurik and we only have the longship left. So I don't think. Um, we can't rid of the longship because then Rurik will float in the middle of the ocean. If we get a Rurik, then we don't have our Garl. So I don't think we can do anything anymore. So what I do, here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, eliminate Rurik so he falls overboard and drowns. That sucks. Um, <laughs> and so our longship is stuck in the middle of the ocean. Here's what I do, is I do, um, and I've done this before. And again, I, the rules don't specify when you lose a Yarl what exactly you can do. It does list Yarls as recruiting, but it has no gold cost. This says deployed by scenario or card. So I may have lost the saga by having him, you know, fall overboard in the middle of the storm. But what I like to do is I like to have a random um, Yarl appear in one of my Viking homelands that I can then use. So we have Eric, Leif, and Harold. Kind of run a little bit. Boom. So we'll have Harold appears in Denmark, Denmark. And then what I do is, let's see, where are we at here? So we did the combat, and we, oh, that was the C, that was just the movement, wasn't it? Now I draw a voyage card, all right? Okay, make an Eda check, succeed. Recruit one Huskarl, Berserker, or Longship, and place it with the Voyaging Force, nice. Fail, lose one unit from the Voyaging Force, not so good. All right, so we can't succeed, so we're gonna lose our ship. Because remember the Eda, we're at zero, so. All right, so we lose our Longship, um, I don't think we're going to succeed in this saga, guys, because now our force is done anyway. Um, Harold, we can say Harold's chilling in Denmark, I guess. That's what we'll do. Let's see what Harold can do here. So, that was our voyage card, right? Yep. So now we'll do combat. No combat. No quest. No pillage. Let's wrap back around to trade. And this one we're down in the trading center. Um, lay down reinforcements. We have zero gold, so it's just Harold. Just Harold chilling here. Uh, he's gonna move sure and he doesn't have a ship he can't move he's stuck here all right game over <laughs> sorry guys i was gonna open a little more of an exciting ending than that but see if you look at the the, the rules um yeah there's no yeah there's no rules for uh if a girl is killed he might be replaced when i'm trying to replace him i wanted a new one um if all four Jarls are eliminated a campaign game, the player loses the campaign game. Uh, so it probably would be, I'm sure, what he would look would real in reality. It doesn't, I don't think it specifies. So again, there are some issues with the rules. Uh, I don't think it specifies. Probably what you should just play it. Either do what I did, but we don't have enough gold, so it really didn't matter. Or just say if your Jarl dies, it's saga over. It's game over. So, all right. That is... Viking Scourge of the North. So usually it's a little bit more of an exciting end, but hey, here's the deal. We got to go from Denmark. We sailed off to Iceland. We pillaged it. We settled Greenland. And then we basically died in a storm in the middle of the ocean. I'm sure I wasn't the first Viking to die in a storm in the middle of the ocean. So um, despite some little snafus like that and then us drowning and losing the saga, again, though I showed you, this is why the game is hard. We also only had one voyage left after this. So if we hadn't... Um, gotten another voyaging card we would have lost so let's see let's just see what it was so say we had been able to go voyage ulti pick one viking settlement at random and eliminate it for the battle then go to combat procedure for the adventure force add two to the number of possible units picked whoa uh which would well, have been the last card anyway so it because once you run out of voyage cards like once you're done to resolving the last one it's automatic game over it's not just you have to go to draw it's actually once it's done and there's none left automatic game over so 
All right, that is, like I said, Viking Scourge of the North. It, it is a lot of fun. It's super hard. Like, I never freaking win. I have won the saga, like, once. Um, but there are four different sagas to go through. So you do have a bunch of replayability here, you know, with different sagas. Um, you can stream together in a campaign mode. You can get your butt kicked just like I did or drown in the ocean. Um, other than that, yeah, I enjoy the game. There's some snafus with the rules, clearly. It's not perfect. Um, you occasionally get that with some of these smaller games where it's like the rules kind of, I feel like they kind of wrote them, played a little bit and said, yeah, they're good. It could probably could have been refined a little bit. You know, some of the wording differences between the rules and the cards, uh, seeing some of the issues like what happens when Gregaro dies, right? Like it talk, uh, talks about, you know, you can, you don't have to pay for costs, but at the same time, it doesn't specify, hey, all it says for sure is if every Jarl, every Jarl is dead, yeah, you uh, lose the campaign. Well, what about if you play one saga? Hmm. Um, reinforcements as well. A little bit of a snafu issue between, you know, can you place them only in a homelander settlement? Can you place them with you, your Jarl? The rulebook says with a Jarl. I go by that. Game is hard enough as is, so I do any little advantage I can to, to make it a little easier. But other than that, you can start exploring and go different ways. So I went up this way, really because that's what it needed. It needed me to head to Greenland or Vinland to settle. But you could head down in. You could head into the interior of Europe here. You could, you know, go pillage down in uh, Europe, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, down in the Mediterranean. More of a campaign game, maybe, because it's so far away from your homeland that you need more time to get to those places. But... Other than that, yeah, a lot of fun, quick little game, not expensive at all, so I think it's worth a try. Uh, let me know below, give me a thumbs up, uh, tell me what you think. All right, till next time, guys, later.